Out and About is made possible in part by Mountain Shepherd Adventure School in Craig County, Virginia. Mountain Shepherd believes that every person can learn to appreciate and navigate the outdoors with confidence. More information at mountainshepherd.com. Welcome to another edition of Out and About. I'm Tom Landon. Today, I find myself in Abingdon, Virginia while working on another project for Blue Ridge PBS, so I brought my bike along so I could finally ride the entire Virginia Creeper rails to trails path after many years of wanting to. So after working all day, I am finally able to take a break and start my bike ride. It's late in the afternoon, so I'm just gonna leave from Abingdon and ride the Creeper Trail up toward Damascus, and then tomorrow I'll ride from White Top back down to Damascus. There's a lot of things to see here. There's plenty of parking here on Pecan Street here in Abingdon. It's a great little town. I encourage you to take some time and check it out. The creeper gets its name from a native plant that grows along the old narrow gauge rail line that brought lumber from higher elevations down to Abingdon, where it could be loaded onto other trains for transport to market. In the 1980s, it was one of the first generation of federal rail-to-trail projects, and its presence has brought millions of tourism dollars to the region since its inception. So this is just about perfect. 70 degrees, end of the day. First mile or two are a little crowded, and then it really becomes a solitary experience, at least on a Monday. The trail is cinders and is a very smooth ride. I imagine this was not a bad job to be the engineer on the lumber train. It's just gorgeous out here. After passing through forest, I arrived in Alvarado, which is the first place the train stopped on its journey from Abingdon. Alvarado has parking and public restrooms at the recently built Alvarado station, as well as snacks and places to stay if you're making more than a day of it during tourist season. On this afternoon ride, I've made it just to the outskirts of Damascus, and I'm gonna turn around because although I have a headlight, I don't really wanna use it. But uh, what a beautiful ride, and I'm looking forward tomorrow to heading up to White Top and riding down to Damascus. So on this stretch, there are a few of these gates that appear to be closed, but if you navigate it with skill, they have a nifty self-closing mechanism on them. So we'll see if I can do it here without having to get off my bike. Success! It's always good to uh, close the gate behind you when you go through the gate because these guys are looking for an opportunity, I'm pretty sure. We're getting close to Abingdon. Looks like I'm gonna make it in plenty of time, riding in the golden hour here. Almost back to Abingdon, but I had to pull over for a second because it's early March and this is the first time I've heard the spring peepers. See if you can listen. So it's day two and I'm in Damascus, Virginia, where I'm gonna get a shuttle up from Damascus to the top of White Top. And I'm using Bicycle Junction as my shuttle company, but there are so many options here to get shuttles. So uh, pretty much uh, all you gotta do is Google it and you'll find the place you wanna go. My driver up the mountain to White Top was Adam Johnson, who owns Bicycle Junction. He was happy to talk about the importance of the trail to the region's economy. 
This is my ninth year. Uh, I am the third owner in this business. Uh, started out with uh, Ronnie and Debbie Reed and uh, they Justin Mooncaster and his wife at the time uh, purchased it and I bought it off of them. In the 80s, the town of Damascus was uh, a lot of empty buildings and uh, the trail has livened Damascus back up again. That's, that's our tourism and that's our economy really for the town. White Top Station is located in the Mount Rogers National Recreation Area. It's home to Christmas tree farms adjacent to the National Forest and serves as the jumping off point for the trail. Once tourism season starts, the station is open to the public with historical displays, restrooms, and concessions. But on this day, it was just a place to start riding. It's about one o'clock as we leave White Top. And uh, the ride to Damascus shouldn't take us more than two, two and a half hours, depending on how much we stop. We're in the first mile of the trail and so far, I have not had to pedal. I'm just coasting. So we are on the first of 46 bridges. Each one is numbered, so you can track your progress all the way to Abingdon. There are interpretive markers all along the trail, including this one that tells the story of how the bridges were built and then converted for public use. Without these wooden trestles, the trail could not exist. So now we're almost two miles in and I still haven't had to pedal. It's, I hope I get enough exercise to uh, work off my lunch. The Green Cove Station is the only original remaining depot building along the Virginia Creeper Trail. Once privately owned, it now serves as another stop on the trail and in summer months is open to the public. Though it was closed when I visited, there was another stop just down the trail that wasn't. So I just stopped at the Green Cove Collective and it, I was glad they were here because uh, I left my long sleeve shirt in the car and while it was 70 at the bottom, it's a little bit chillier at 4,000 feet. It's a really cool little store. Let's go inside. Uh, my name is Scott Little and you're at Green Cove Collective, which is a retail store on the Virginia Creeper Trail. We've been here for four years this year. Um, we also, we started with a website. Um, uh, this is like a general supply shop, outdoor brand that we started eight years ago online. And um, our little brick and mortar here serves the Virginia Creeper Trail and the Appalachian Trail and the Damascus community um, down in town. Our, probably our biggest draw is we always have hot coffee, hot cocoa and tea for people who need to warm up. We have a wood burning stove that people can sit by. We, uh, we have socks, hats, gloves, hoodies, all the warm things that people need while they're riding down the trail to get warm. We have a lot of people who just come in and shop. Uh, and support us and I think that that's one thing I love about this store is I, I call it community-based retail It's not just a transactional thing you come in you sit down you have a cup of coffee you visit by the fire You, you create relationships. It's not just about hey buy this We're doing this ride Very early in the season. In fact, it was the first day that the outfitter was uh, running shuttles during the week so not everything's open along the trail, but just to be able to stop along the way and listen is a real treat. We've gone about six and a half miles and I just came across this place and I'm intrigued by it. These are handicap accessible fishing platforms. Be a nice place to have a picnic too. A little further down the trail is the intersection with the Appalachian Trail, the hiking trail that runs from Georgia to Maine. The AT is also a huge contributor to the local economy, including the Trail Days Festival that happens each spring in Damascus when hikers pass through the region. As we get closer to Damascus, the temperature rises again as we lose elevation. And the adjacent White Top Laurel Creek goes from being just a babbling brook to a roaring river on its way to the Holston River near Abingdon. I can sense the approach of warmer days when flowers and leaves would completely change the landscape. One of the last settlements I passed through is Taylor's Valley, an unincorporated community that's home to the seasonal Hellbender's Cafe, named for the large, fully aquatic amphibian with a flathead, wrinkled body, and paddle-shaped tail that's native to the area. 
The closer you get to Damascus, you'll find several cabins for rent along the river. So we've gone about 14 and a half miles, only a few miles left to go to Damascus. And you get a sense it's flattening out a little bit as you get down into the valley. So uh, actually you're gonna have to work a little bit from here. It's been a great day. I'm headed back to Roanoke now, headed back north on I-81 before I left Damascus. I did stop at the Damascus Diner for some replenishment because a lot of the places you can eat on the trail during the tourist season were not open today and I arrived pretty hungry. I highly recommend the Damascus Diner. I also took some time to kind of walk around Damascus and see the many outfitters and rental properties and even the old bill hotel and restaurant and uh, i'm already planning my next trip back when it's a little bit warmer and maybe i can get down into that creek when i get hot so uh thanks again for coming i'm not sure where we're headed next but i'll see you out and about <laughs>